In this video, I go over the latest robbery in Medellin, Colombia, as well as give you a few safety tips. You gotta stay safe. Follow along. You're watching DC Born Rob, Racing Borders. And now, the news. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. And welcome to the show. My name is Rob, also known as DC Born Rob. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm going to jump right into this first video. This uh, robbery just took place. So I wanted to put this out here and go over a few tips on how not to be a mark. Don't get got, okay? You've heard me say this for a long time. Anybody can get got. And if, if you think you cannot, think again. You can. So let's do this. Let's jump straight into the video. This right here is from a uh, CCTV camera system. So let me just run this. There's, there's no audio, but you see the guy walking up to him. He's got a gun and you see uh, the other guys, baseball caps, backpacks, gold or silver chains, something worth stealing, cell phones and cash, luggage, duffel bag, Okay, so I'm noticing at least six things. And then there's always somebody else. Remember, they, they pull up on a motorcycle, so there's always somebody in the background, too, with a helmet on It's going to run out, possibly. Normally, he just sits on a motorcycle. The one guy robs you, he runs and jumps on the back. I'm going to give you some good tips. I found a good list of uh, tips that I'm going to show you. But while I'm, uh, while I'm showing you this, and it's going to run a couple of times, I, I just want to tell you, here's a few things that made them marks. Number one, the ball caps backpacks and luggage. Okay, that's one thing. You look like a tourist and you're going to a tourist location. This is the energy building. Now, this has not been publicized on the news as of yet. So I just want to want to put that out there. It has not been authenticated by one of those news sources, but this just happened yesterday. So, and, and I want to put it out because you guys need to be aware. Don't be a mark. Don't get got. So here's the here's what I'm saying. Okay, not only do they they wear the you know backpacks, of course. You go into a hotel. That's second of all. You go into a hotel. You go into an expensive hotel slash Airbnb. And I'm going to show you what the Airbnb is in a second too. But that's number two. So not only that, before the guy runs up on him, now you'll see they're both looking at their cell phones. Okay. Let's look before they run up. Look at them, both looking down. Nobody's paying attention. Okay, let this, this will start over in a second, but you'll see. And we all do this too. When we're out and about, we all look down at our cell phones, where we're we going, let's call inside, you know, and they're both doing it, so they're not aware. Okay, so they're dressed inappropriately. They're looking down at their cell phones. They're wearing gold. I don't know how many of my videos you've seen. Stop wearing flashy jewelry. No rings, no silver, no gold, not even fake silver or gold. Why? I mean, why get robbed and shot over a fake piece of jewelry? That's worse than getting shot over jewelry. Well, getting shot is getting shot. So either way. Okay. There was a discussion in the uh, WhatsApp group about uh, wearing shorts a little while ago, too. And, you know... <laughs> A couple of us are saying you don't wear shorts. You don't wear shorts in Medellin. You're marked at that point too as a tourist. Okay, so now you're marked as being a tourist. And and, and like I commented then, you know, try not, you you're gonna do what you want to do. People gonna want to wear shorts, and I even commented they're gonna wear shorts. They're gonna wear so they're gonna wear socks and flip flops. And look it, socks and flip flops. Socks and flip flops. Okay. <laughs> You're making yourself a mark. This is like everything not to do. The only thing they're missing is the sign that says, por favor, rob me. That's the only thing they're missing right here. So they're wearing a gold and silver. They're wearing flip-flops and socks and shorts. They're looking down at their cell phones. They're staying at an expensive place. They have backpacks and bags and all this stuff sitting out front. Now, you also have to know some of these, most criminals, they follow you. They watch you. It doesn't matter if they watch you for 10 minutes an hour, or some of them, if they know the loot is high enough, they'll watch you for a day or so or two days and they'll watch your habits. You seem to walk through this backyard on your way to the same corner store. Everybody else got one of these uh, uh, corner stores. So, and I used to go to the same one. And really I only had two ways to go to the same location, but I, I stayed in a pretty decent area. 
Um, and it was always a guard on my corner and one in my building and one next door at uh, Alamo where, where I ate breakfast at. So they're always watching your return, um, your routines. Now, keep in mind, Paisa people hate thieves. If they get caught, they will normally stomp them. And I have plenty of video of that. I haven't showed it, but there's plenty of video of that, of them just stomping somebody. And the cops have to save the robber from the uh, from the Paisa people. They don't play that. They don't play that. If you get caught, the whole thing is with the gun. And I'm going to give you some good tips. But let me show you, though. I want to show you a... Uh, a picture of the building. So it's the energy building, energy living. And this is what the outside looks like. Really high dollar, fancy swimming pool. You know, it's just, it's a high end location. Here is, uh, here it is on Airbnb. This is a two bedroom one right here too. 343 per night. This is US dollars. So you can imagine people that live there, robbers that know, uh, that live there know that when you stay there, you got bank. You know, and a lot of people want to throw all these parties and invite some people over and you just met somebody at the bar and you start introducing them over, whether they're American or not. And we're going to go over that, too, uh, in, a, in a, uh, another video I'm doing. I just interviewed uh, Terrence uh, uh, about his trip there and his safety tips and so on. I'll probably post that in another day or two, but I just interviewed him. Um, and everybody in the WhatsApp group is aware of that uh, of Terrence and his trip and how much uh, of a good time he had going to Sweet George Cafe, Brooklyn, skydiving, Comuna Trece, all that good stuff. But he was aware, aware before he went down. So he stayed safe, of course. So look at this place. Let me just show you a couple of uh, pictures here. So if you want to stay in a high dollar area, you want to wear shorts, you want to wear flip flops, you want to wear flip flops with socks. You want to walk around with a backpack on, jewelry, um, mark, okay? These places look nice. This is not how I lived when I lived there. Look at that. This is really nice. So, I mean, you pay the price, you know? But let me just jump right into, because I want to make this a quick one. There's a few uh, tips. And this guy, I'm reading from uh, MedellinBuzz.com. So this guy has lived there for 11 years or nine years, he says. Um, and he's been robbed uh, zero times. So he's going to give you a few tips and tricks. His first one, you know, I don't really agree with, but we'll, we'll take it from here. So it says, number one, don't take an Uber, which I'm a fan of Uber and say, I'm sketchy about cab drivers. But here's what he says. Everybody's got an opinion. So this is his and I have mine. Um, the foreigner Facebook groups are uh, going to go crazy over this one. I am, I am not saying never use an Uber. I've used it in Medellin. And I know it's cheaper oftentimes than, and safer than taxis. I will certainly certainly use Uber in the future in Medellin. But I also know from experience that Uber drivers in Medellin can be some of the most incompetent drivers in the city. They are usually late and often get lost without a functioning GPS. A little unspoken street rules of the city, such as rolling through any red light on a roundabout uh, at 2 a.m. Just saying that they drive sketchy. So that's him saying don't drive Uber. That's number one. Okay. Number two, limit your vulnerability. And I agree with this one. In Colombia, the expression you will hear from locals, and you've heard it from me too, is uh, no dar papaya, which translates to don't give papaya. It basically means to not give would-be criminals the chance to rob you. Do not leave your computer or cell phone out in the open. Uh, keep your electronics tucked away whenever possible. Don't walk around at night by yourself, limiting your vulnerability can also mean limiting your potential losses. It's a reality of being in Medellin that you might get robbed. Uh, so many good things, one little bad thing. Okay, so just be aware of this. And I'm gonna run through this quick again too. Make eye contact and smile at people. This is a good one. Wherever you go, I'm always, buenas, buenas, buenas. From anybody in my building, outside my building, around, just smile. Man, a smile goes a long way. Let me, let me tell you his ex explanation for this stuff. Have you ever committed a crime that you have uh, landed in jail? He says, I have. I'm not proud of this, but I have. Thankfully, I didn't get caught. What I want to um, what want to know how an average criminal petty thieves feels prior to committing a crime. They're nervous. They don't want to get caught and they are hyper aware of any signs that something might go wrong. Remember that thieves in general want an easy job by making eye contact with people as you pass them on the street. You are letting them know, hey, I see you. 
at times this brief acknowledgement can be enough to spook a would-be thief and deter them from uh, deter them elsewhere. A criminal's wet dream is a drunken tourist at 2 a.m. who has no idea of their surroundings and he who can easily be surprised. That's a good one. Keep eye contact. Let people know you see them. Pay attention. Don't turn your back to people when you know somebody's there. You know, just look at them. Look at them in the eye. Some people give them a look. I've given some looks like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm not the one. What's up? And just pay attention. And sometimes they'll scoop. You can tell and they just mark the next one. OK, it's as easy as somebody breaking into a car. If there's five cars and one of them has the door unlocked, guess who's getting robbed? They always take the easy one. So think of this. OK, this one says, mind your routines. I just spoke of this a little while ago. Uh, the rule is more for anyone who calls Medellin home or who is looking to make Medellin their next home. Um, robberies are not as random as you may think. Anyone who has been robbed has probably been scoped out and, uh, for a spell before actually getting robbed. A Colombian friend told me that uh, what these would do is stash their guns someplace safe, ride around in search of a potential target, put a spotter on the target, go back for the gun and return and then rob the mark. He says, you'll see, you see in Colombia, there are no laws limiting when the police can pull someone over. There is no need for probable cause. If two police officers see two young guys cruising around on a motorcycle, they can pull them over, no questions asked. Obviously getting caught on a motorbike on a motorbike with an unregistered gun is something most criminals would rather avoid. So they wait, take their time and hide the gun while they find their next mark. That is good. I didn't know that. I'm thinking, you know, just picture in my head, they're riding around looking for somebody. He's got his gun, but they stash it ahead of time, he says. Okay, next one. Try to stay where the people are. Okay. Uh, a good friend of mine once told me that if you walk down the street uh, that has a good amount of people, particularly local Colombian people, you're probably all good in terms of safety. The problem comes when you find yourself on a quiet street and there and you're uh, not many people. Pisces, Colombians from Antioquia, hate thieves. In fact, since the legal punishment for those that get caught stealing is so light, if a group of local Pisces catch a thief, they will often chase the thief and beat the mess out of him before they call the cops. Taxi drivers will chase down motorbikes and random strangers will get, uh, get in on the act. Most local thieves know this. As a result, they look for times when they can catch you in a place without many people. Be around people, go in groups. And the next one says, go in groups. Uh, this should not go without saying, but you're almost always safer in a large group than you are uh, by walking by yourself, even two or three friends. So when you go out at night, try to stick with a large group or make sure uh, everyone in the group stays together. So join the WhatsApp group. I have people that are going down, coming down, people there now, people that live there, people that are thinking about going. Hook up with somebody. Terrence went down solo, met up with people, met up with some good people at Sweet Georgia Cafe, hung out at Chef Jay's at Brooklyn's. He had his crew with him, you know, so that when he went somewhere that, you know, thought to be sketchy, he had somebody with him and anybody that's going down there. Hook up on the WhatsApp group. I'm telling you, send me your email and your WhatsApp number to dcbornrobgroup at gmail.com, dcbornrobgroup at gmail.com, and we'll get you in the uh, group. I think we're just over 130 members right now. Valuable, valuable information. I can't explain it until you see it, how valuable it is, until you see somebody yesterday getting ready to get on a flight, but the check me thing doesn't work. And people are, okay, check the flight number. Okay, check this. This one's in Spanish, this one's in English. The next thing you know, boom, boom, he's in. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys to everybody that gave him help. Everybody hopped on that so quick. Man, thank you guys. If you're in the WhatsApp group, props to you. You guys are rolling, let me tell you. This is bigger than I could have possibly thought it could be. You guys are really helping each other. Because remember, the reason for my site, uh, for my site, my channel, and the WhatsApp group is to get you guys to travel, number one, but to travel there, enjoy yourself, and then come back safely. The key word is safely. So remember, I'm talking to you, the one person that gets some benefit out of my videos. So again, I don't care if I get a subscriber one a day, somebody that got something out of my videos that <laughs> subscribed and thought, you know what? This is something that may save my life. This may, this may be a benefit to me when I get there. So 
Go in groups. Okay, seven, know where the fishermen fish. We understand that one, right? Okay, we know where the money is. Where do you rob? Who has the money? The bank. You go to where the bank is. So if you're hanging at Poblado and Parque Lleras, mark right off the bat, okay? That's where all the tourists go. Well, that's where some of the tourists go and they go and they hang out and they drink and you, you, you're you already a mark when you're there. I mean, everybody has to go. I say experience it, you know, and I've been a few times and I've even done a video there too, a behind the scenes of Parque Lleras, not just the, you know, the, the, the fun part of it, but the behind the scenes of how it became. But everybody should go. I mean, you should go. Enjoy that park. Enjoy walking around the neighborhood. Just be aware and then scoot and go somewhere else. You don't have to hang up there all the time, but you're going to do what you want to do. Again, you're going to do what you want to do. I got that. But know this, the robbers know where to go fish. Know where the fishermen fish. Okay, walk in an irregular manner. Now, I do this one anyway. If I'm not familiar with where I am, I never walk down the sidewalk because anybody could just pop out of any little walkway. I always walk down the street. But what he's saying is zigzag too. So here we go. Uh, if you must walk by yourself at night, uh, please at least do it in a way that's odd or irregular. Cross the street multiple times for no reason at all. If the street is quiet enough, you can walk down the middle of the road. You uh, can even try walking against traffic. This way, no motorbike can sneak up behind you. Boom. Good tip. Good tip. I hadn't thought of that. Walk against the traffic because nobody can come roll up behind you. Okay. Uh, don't get too wasted. Common sense, right? Common sense. Don't get too wasted. Sometimes you party, 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 and there's a fine line between partying and everything is going good and you're at the top of the mountain and you're partying and that one more drink puts you over the side. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody there can relate to this because I definitely can. You are partying, you, you go up to the top of the mountain, you're drinking, you're having a good old time, and then that one more that just takes you off the side. So be careful. Somebody can put something in your drink. Somebody can purposely try to get you drunk. So be careful, okay? Don't get too wasted. Okay, 10, uh, don't go looking for prostitutes. You don't do what you want to do. Some of you cats are going to do what you want to do. And, and uh, like we heard from James the other day, some of the women there frown on Americans just on general principle. You're coming for sex tourism. That's how they look at you. They think anybody who is there is there, is there for that reason, who's American. So it's on you. Like I said, people are going to do what they want to do. So, you know, and it is what it is. So I, I, I don't fault nor get props for. So. Um, but this is what he's saying. Don't go looking for prostitutes. Lots of foreign men like to come to Colombia for prostitutes. Prostitution is legal and is most common in most major cities. Aside from being morally wrong, soliciting prostitution is a great way to put yourself in an intimate situation with someone who will likely take advantage of you. Are you so naive that uh, to think that these girls want to sleep with random men? In fact, that she, the fact that she's a prostitute is not an indicator that she is in a desperate situation. Maybe you think she loves you. Maybe you maybe you think you're special. Whatever the case, if you're trolling Parque Lleras and search for prostitutes, you are increasing your chance of being drugged or robbed or about 7,000%. You've been warned. That's his statement. You've been warned. Okay. Next one. I think this is the last one. Uh, always have an ID and be careful of where you buy your drugs. Okay. Obviously, don't buy drugs, you know. But um, he says uh, there are more than one type of criminal in Medellin. If given the opportunity, local police officers will leverage their power for a little uh, since uh, a little slice of the tourist pie too. Do not go out without an ID. You can be extorted into paying a fine for not having identification as a foreigner. So evidently that's illegal. And be careful about purchasing drugs and walking around with them uh, on you at night. Uh, if you go into a barrio uh, in Antioquia to buy a bag of Coke, first of all, don't watch my videos if you're going out buying Coke, but that's on you again still. You know, just keep on, keep it moving. Um, but be warned that the police will usually wait on the edges of the neighborhood to stop any uh, taxi with gringos in it. Uh, I have been stopped randomly by the police officers in Poblado and Laureles numerous times solely because they were looking to see if I had drugs, uh, the uh, so they could uh, be coaxed into paying a fine. So remember, uh, what's his name? The actor that was in Cartagena, 
They got uh, uh, not got punched in the face. What's his name? Now I can't remember his name. Well, if you remember him, they say that the guy next to him was a drug dealer, and that's why they were pulling up on him. And remember, you're not in America. You don't have any recourse. What are you going to do? Let me call my lawyer. No, dude, you're in another country, man. Sometimes you got to humble yourself. You got to humble yourself. Somebody's trying to rob you. Give them your cell phone. Dude, give them your cell phone. I heard somebody comment, and I'm bringing this up because I heard somebody comment in a chat line that I would have given them a run for their money. I used to say that when I was young, too. And maybe when you're young, you don't realize what you have to lose. But again, I'm a little bit an older cat, so I know how much I have to lose now. Um, maybe you have family depending on you. Maybe you have children. Maybe you have a wife. You have a significant other. You know, uh, you have a good job um, that you need to watch out for. So when you get older, you start thinking, you know what? OK, you think more. Let's put it that way. You think instead of reacting. And I know for me personally, I have to now think, OK, what's the good that's going to come out of this situation? Yeah, I could try to fight somebody back and, and, and stick, rip, take the gun from them. I could try to do that. And I probably would have if I was 18 and I was those cats right there. The, the guy moving the gun around, he was, when he was looking at the goal. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, I probably would have done something stupid like that when I was young. But now I think and now I know from doing these videos for so long and living there, give it to them. Give it to them. I've told you how to put your money in a money belt. They would not have found the money belt on them. They were taking money out of their pocket. I told you. Keep a little bit of money in this pocket. Keep a little bit of money in that pocket just for giveaways. And they see that's where the money is. Even if they may have watched you come from an ATM and saw you put the money in your pocket. They may have followed you from the airport. You guys got to be careful. And that's why I do these videos. OK, this is why I do this. These videos to keep you safe, to get there, enjoy it, have the experience that I had, have the experience that Terrence just had and come back safely or move there or retire there, or, or enjoy it in whatever way you're gonna do. But this is just a little bit of advice to you. Again, if you're getting any benefit out of my videos, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and like, okay? Like helps the YouTube algorithm. You've heard me say it before, it does so much. Every time you guys hit like, and I do appreciate that too, okay? Every time you hit like, it uh, changes the algorithm. So YouTube says, hey, these people really like this video. Not only are they watching it, but they liked it. So let's show it to a wider audience. So anyway, thank you guys uh, for watching. And again, be safe. We have a YouTube channel. Like it. Please comment and share if you like the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.